on, on many cases. And when I first realized that, and also I never followed, the, get the idea of the the Bible and the Torah is corrupted, you know, that the people love to talk about. And I never uh, said they are the corrupted. I only blamed Christians for not understanding the message itself, why I never actually kind of um, said it is bad or it is wrong. Then I started to actually, uh, the I met the people uh, like the David Wood and like Sam and the Nabil. And when I first met with them, uh, I start to realize they are kind of attacking the Islam itself. And I was like, like, hmm, maybe I should check that because apparently knowing something doesn't actually mean you understand it because I already knew what they're talking about. And I was like, so what's wrong with that? So what is wrong with uh, Aisha having sex with them? I realized, hey, it is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, my brother, uh, it looks like we were not live uh, for at least five minutes. I'm not so sure what happened. So, uh, let me repeat the question, if you don't mind, for the benefit okay. of everybody, so oh. they can hear what you have said. So, we are going to uh, basically, uh, once again, start with the music, so that will give people mm. a cue that this is where we're going to start again, even though I cannot stop the live stream <laughs> at the moment. I and see. then we'll start all over. I apologize. For some reason, we were having some technical issues. I'm not so sure what happened. So everyone here, we're going to start with the music again as if it's a brand new show. So if you download it, you can cut uh, the beginning if you want, because it was only you guys captured just a minute or two of his talk. So there we go. So again, everybody, sorry about the technical difficulty. I'm glad we were able to fix it and even catch it uh, on time. Apparently, uh, the live stream wasn't really working, and I'm glad I was prompted to uh, check a couple of things in front of me uh, that were uh, you know, basically alerted me to that. So uh, we have a very special guest today who will be sharing his testimony. He's an ex-Muslim, and uh, I feel so bad for our guest. He, he really invested at least a few minutes talking about uh, my first question. So you, didn't, you, you folks didn't miss a whole lot. You missed the first question, but uh, I pray that he, uh, you know, will be kind enough to share as much as he can remember with us. Uh, thank you for all of you who are joining us here. Uh, thank you for the moderators uh, who are here as well. Uh, by the way, uh, our viewers, please keep it clean, keep it professional, keep your questions focused only on the topic, which is a former Muslim sharing his journey uh, to Christ. Uh, so no attacks. We have people here who are moderators who know Arabic very well. So even if you try the Arabic stuff, it ain't, ain't going to work here. With that says, Brother Ender, my sincerest apologies for uh, interrupting you and having you to start all over again. As I was saying, the first question, please tell our viewers uh, a little bit about your background. Um, how did you grow up and uh, how did you consider yourself as a follower of Islam? Did you consider yourself you? were devout, uh, were you just a cultural Muslim, and so on and so forth. So thank you again. Uh, uh, thank you for having me as well again. And uh, so as you say, like uh, when I first, uh, I grew up in a, a really actually kind of devoted Muslim family, although I, they, they, they think they are devoted by, they, you know, they are the people that following the just Imams and not actually the, the studying to kind of love the Islamic stuff, but they still devoted and radicals. And uh, when I first, uh, so my journey with the Islam start when I was a child. So I started to, to learn my religion from my books and my hadiths. And because of that, uh, the issues that these new Muslims are uh, having while what the stuff that they don't like, I always had no issue with them. The issues and demonic stuff with Islam, I never had issue because, because when you learn some stuff as a child, and you kind of accept them as a as a as a fact as a truth and only thing in life so and uh, the, because of that uh, it took a really long time for me to even uh, to question about stuff like that because i always saw and allah and islam is a kind of a government system that you not just just believe but you are under his it is rule so 
like it or not, you're still under its rule. And for that matter, uh, I always think that something is wrong with me in that case because I never bring myself to able to hate some people just because Allah want to or just uh, want to do some stuff just because Allah want to. Yeah. And yeah, that kind of. So, so what you're saying is um, uh, we, we, the more you learned about uh, the teaching of Islam, uh, the more you felt you're troubled by some of the teachings and commands. Is that is that correct? Is that uh, uh, how you are seeing it? Uh, actually, in the beginning, it is not. In the beginning part, uh, I just learned and accept that it is. But some part of it, I wasn't able to bring myself to accept. But it, how to say, like... If a government have a rule about something like don't go outside after midnight or something, even if I don't like it, I don't do it. But it doesn't mean I accepting it. That uh, the problem was that like uh, why Allah is uh, like why did I have so much right about uh, over women? Even though you know we, have the, we should basically be the same. I never ac accept to hate some, just some people because Allah says so. But in that matter, I accepted my fate to go hell and. I think somehow I never uh, scared from hell and punishment because if uh, Allah is gonna go against my nature to for stuff like that, well, what can I do? I can't trick a God that uh, act like if I uh, agree with Him, right? So I never even tried to do that because it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, but the issue started when I actually when people uh, started to make me realize what I know because. Uh, um, uh, knowing something doesn't actually mean that you're understanding it. So it is from uh, what I uh, especially see lately for many Muslims, they knowing some stuff, even though they're not actually thinking on that or any any consideration about what they think. For example, I even shocked about that lately. Why did I never able to realize that before? You know that uh, that in the in the Quran uh, it is basically Allah say he he kind of tricked everybody into believing they killed Jesus right so Allah is blaming them Christians believing in a uh, death and resurrection of Jesus but actually Allah is tricking them to do that so but mm. that <laughs> so, so you were able to to see that basically in the verse exactly but the issue is I never questioned that before to the consequences of the action of the Allah. I only able to question that after I start to be more um, criticizing, basically, more start to think, what am I thinking? Even so, it is I believe something called like epistemology or something. Then when you start to, to talk about the thing that you know, so you can actually listen yourself. And when uh, the people like the David Wood and the Nabil Qureshi start to talk about issues like that, I never see any issue. Like, uh, like again in the in the Aisha issue. Yes, she was you know young, and so what is the problem? And when I first said that, I start to say, Ah, I see the problem now. <laughs> Okay, so, so I, I want to slow you down because I, I want you to take your time here. So, so when, when, when did you feel as you were growing up? Uh, when did you remember or feel that you began to at least have a critical mind, critical thinking? Was it the environment where you uh, uh, living at that enabled you to do so? Were you influenced by some family members? Was it at school? What, what prompted you to start thinking critically? Well, uh, I am kind of an uh, antisocial guy, so I never have too many friends or too many connection with my family and my uh, places and, and any other people. Uh, mainly stuff coming from the myself and my inner uh, kind of contradiction inside of me because I always read Quran and always read. And until I, I started to, you know, as you say, when I start to see issues, I, I, it kind of really scary actually, uh, because I don't want to accept that it is a false, but I go with it anyway. But yeah, it is basically in the first uh, stages, uh, I, I kind of, kind of tricked myself to not really think into that, if I say so. Very good. Uh, so at what age uh, were you exposed to, let's say, the, the, the work? Uh, let, let me back up a little bit. What was your understanding of Christianity and Christ uh, b b before we get into uh, other things? I mean, when you grow up, uh, how did you accept Christianity and Christ? Were you surrounded by Christians or did you interact with Christians? Well, 
I never had any Christian before in my life. I believe, yes, yes, I never have. And when I was a Muslim, I think the the Christians as like this, this you know, the the pre uh, pre Muslims that they were the believing in the Prophet uh, Isa, and they are kind of following him. But after that, somehow, this is still shocking me. The the stupid because it's really stupidly, uh, they tricked by Allah to not believe in what they believe but those oh god I make no sense to even myself <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So what you're saying is like you felt bad for them that Allah tricked them uh, into believing what they believe in so you're not blaming them you're blaming actually Allah for allowing him to do what they're doing uh, exactly, exactly, and this is why I never direct, directly attacked the, the, the Christianity itself or the the day. But I just blame them, kind of tricked it. It is, it is like blaming a rape victim. Actually, can you imagine that? <laughs> it is horrible. Why wouldn't I realize that before? Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. So then, then when did you yourself began to let's say learn more? about Christ and Christianity that is different than what you assumed? So, uh, when again, when I first uh, to listen to this the, the dear brother Nabil, I started to want to actually wanna, wanna read the Torah itself and the Bible itself. And when I... Hey, maybe there's something wrong because um, how to say? Uh, yeah, it 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 is begin that. But I actually start to, to look the foundation itself. Actually, so you you are having exposure to YouTube uh, apparently at that time, and maybe other means. That's that's definitely great. Do you think social media played a role in you and your request, uh, or were were you searching out of curiosity, by the way, or was it a desire to know more? So yes, there is a desire to know more. Uh, it was always within me because I always knew in the like kind of back in my head that something is odd here. That something is fishy. That's, that something is not ma ma making ma making sense. But yeah, the 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 actual people that make uh, really help to me are the people like the this the David and this, uh, the Nabil and said because I I knew. Uh, I approach other with uh, other Christians before, but their approach methods are not that good because apparently they don't even um, kind of have to say uh, excuse me saying that, but they probably don't even read Paul before <laughs> because Paul said to them, "I was Jew to Jews and non-believer to non-believer, non-believers." But these uh, really uh, dear brothers are try to reach me like a, a, if I was a Christian. You know, they wasn't aware of that their uh, lovely and respectful way of um, uh, approaching me wasn't make any sense to me because uh, they, I, I even saw some people say we believe in the same God. I was like, why? <laughs> because it doesn't gonna bring me to any anything, and only people actually make me started to question uh, like the, the for that because of their aggression and their uh, have to say they they was really firm with that. And for that, I saw they are sincere and they are attacking and they sincere actually. And so that make me question why this guy so sincere and attacking my religion? What am I missing actually? So I should maybe check stuff again, you know? Wow. Yeah. Did, did, did you hear about him uh, uh, from others? Like, how did you know that he existed and, and you went to uh, look at what he's saying? Uh, it was kind of uh, I it it no, I it was from YouTube just randomly actually. Wonderful, and um, uh, were you alone in this journey, or do you know of any of your peers or friends maybe um, were sharing similar things with you, or it, did did you keep it quiet yourself and everybody was keeping it quiet out of fear maybe? Well, uh, for 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 the moment, for uh, up until the moment that I accepted Jesus, it was yes, it was a secret, secret, and I had to suffer along for myself with uh, because I never actually tried to reach anybody about that. I had to deal with it myself. But yeah, after I accepted that, I had some a uh, few friends that I can actually share with them. They was more lucky than me because they <laughs> having somebody to to walk with them is actually apparently have more impact to them. 
uh, rather than me. I wish I had somebody too, but apparently I don't have back then. But yeah, that's great. That's great. So uh, once again, let me let me thank everybody uh, for being here. Uh, you are joining us at a special edition of uh, Let Us Reason live stream with us here. A very special guest. Uh, we're gonna call him Brother Ender, and uh, he's sharing his testimony and uh, how he came to know the Lord. And it's fascinating, really, to to see how open-minded he was. He was even more critical of the teaching of Allah in the Quran against Christians than the other way around. That shows you how many of, I mean, I, I perceive, brother, you're a young person, and that tells me how many of our young generation right now in the Muslim world are becoming more and more and more aware of these issues. We thank God for social media platforms. I know people sometimes feel like we are attacking, but in his view, it was, how come these person who are attacking uh, my religion, in this case, Islam, they appear to be more genuine and sincere. In other words, it wasn't really uh, done out of evil. It's actually exposing lies by the religion, not necessarily attacking the people. And that's our hope that many of you will see that that's the work that we like to do. It's not about attacking our Muslim people. I love my Muslim people, my family Muslim. Uh, his family are still Muslim. We love them. We want to share the truth with them. And at the end of the day, it's God who makes a change. I can't change anyone. And it's not about, uh, you know, earning good deeds because I want to count how many Muslims I brought to Christ. Not at all. We have our assurance of salvation. We know where we're going. We want them to join us in this huge heavenly celebration one day uh, where it, people from all tribes, all nations, all tongues will be praising the risen Lord, the living God. Uh, with that in mind, uh, brother, so when did you become more and more a, a seeker, if you wish, in the sense that hmm. you're realizing there is something that not, not doesn't fit right with you about Islam, but you're exploring <laughs> what's out there, and maybe did you look at other things, or was it just Christ and Christianity? So the, actually, when I first uh, started, you know, that I said, like, I need to start to, to, to read Torah, right? So when I started to, to read the Torah, I was a Muslim. But the first, I then I started to realize, hey, something is fishy here too, because it is already talking about a God doesn't look like an Allah, like in Genesis uh, 13, I think so. Like there is at least th three personality in there, one in up. So, hey, what is going on there? Then uh, it starts there to I actually start to, to realize it is not just the type of heat, but, but what we looks what we think like. And after Are that... Are you talking about the story in Genesis with Abraham and the three that uh, came to him? Yes. Yeah, so uh, for the benefit of those who are here, uh, our brother is talking about Genesis 18 and 19. And specifically in Genesis 19, 24, something amazing. It says that the Lord poured down... Uh, sulfur from the Lord in heaven. I'm just kind of paraphrasing it for you. And you can go and look. It's two Yahwehs, Yahweh on earth and Yahweh in heaven. And Sam did an amazing job the other day when we did a, uh, a show uh, regarding these issues. And uh, that's what our brother is talking about. So you see how the Holy Spirit worked in his heart. He can see something strange about these phraseologies. Go ahead, brother. And exactly after that, I started to... The funny thing is, I actually started to with uh, like kind of fall in love with it because unlike the Quran itself, it is actually a book that is easy to read. <laughs> it was really a fresh air. And after that, uh, when I first uh, my my biggest shock happened in the I believe the first book of Samuel when uh, the the king it, it was about the king David when he was uh, lost after a woman and sent his uh, you know husband to war and get him and get a baby and. I was reading that and oh, cool, okay cool so it is a bad too then uh, uh, then God is there like uh, not ang not happy with that kind of angry with that and and he, uh, God goes and kind of punish he, him with a child child right I forget to talk right now I'm sorry <laughs> it's uh, it's no problem give me one second here <laughs> I saw a name sister hope uh, you are next in line I'll be reaching out to you to see when we can schedule uh, you ha uh, being here with us to share your testimony I just wanted you to be aware of that go ahead brother so uh, when I first like read that I was at home it was kind of like a getting shocked because I knew the same thing just happened to happen to happen in Muhammad <laughs> because that the same 
why it is the same ex i don't know but it is almost the same like he lusted after his adopted son's wife and tried to to say oh keep your wife you know uh, but allah is like go get him boy why would you try to keep uh, what with what is halal to you and i was like how can these two god can be same <laughs> So what you're saying, uh, that's really interesting. And and by the way, love all my moms. Uh, I did ask these questions and I can tell you that uh, his family doesn't know yet. Uh, so I'll, that's all I can say. We'll ask him later the last question. Uh, brother, uh, so what you're saying is you question the morality of the prophet of Islam. Is that fair? Exactly. And the yeah. gut itself. Amen. Amazing. Go Keep mm -hmm. going, brother. And after that happened, I started to question, so what happened to this God that is fair and, and just in this book suddenly turn into kind of, excuse my language, but kind of a pimp to a prophet? So how can this be? What is, 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 is this God get a brain damage or something? Then I started to realize, hey, maybe Islam is false. Because if, if Yahweh is false, Islam is false. But Islam does say Yahweh isn't actually uh, had to uh, kind of deal with Islam itself. So I had to go one of them or neither of them. But I always kind of knew Yahweh's real God. Then I followed that. Yeah, and uh, once again, love all my moms. No, 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 please. I'm, I'm not uh, saying that uh, you came in late or anything like that. I did ask him privately these questions. That's what I meant. Um, now, uh, love all my moms. Are, are you a Muslim, by the way? If you are, please uh, share with us because I'd, I'd like to know uh, if you have any questions, particular questions. Uh, one of our questions to you was, uh, do you feel safe right now? So you might want to address this towards the end after you're done with your story. So um, at one point, did you realize, you know what? Jesus is the way. And uh, what prompted you to start thinking this way? And when did that take place? Well, after that, and I keep reading the, uh, the Torah itself, and I, uh, because of I escaped the grasp of the Islam. After that, I was I was kind of actually there to accept Jesus itself. But all the issues that I solved back then, I need more research, and I wasn't really sh uh, I was kind of shy about it. So I was trying to more research, and after that, uh, in the end, yes, I I come to Jesus because. Then I realized I need to follow this, this, this God, not other ones. Amen. Uh, folks here on a, on a chat, you are given this can pack oxygen. I already put him in timeout. If he comes back, moderators, I give you the permission to put him in a can and pack him away. Thank you. Go ahead, brother. Keep, keep going. So because I uh, have to say, uh, even though I didn't able to accept it before, uh, you know, Islam teach you really, really uh, go away from the Jesus in that matter to accept it as a God, accepting that religion. Because of that, I had really, really hard time to even come close to that. But apparently the spirit is there for me when I wasn't there for him. But yeah, it, it was really, really hard to struggle. But in the end, yes, I kind of uh, had to suffer, had to kind of deal with my ego to being wrong for the entire of my life. And uh, after that, I, I able to bring myself to accept Jesus. Just not when I had an ego to uh, to not accept it at the fact that I was wrong. <laughs> and lied to myself, by the way. That, that was the harsher part. Hallelujah. Did you feel a change, an inner change? Uh, yes, it is. It is really, really uh, have to say. I remember the first time I actually did that. Uh, there was, you know, a, a struggle in me that the keeps that that the keep both bringing, trying to be, make me to the more Islamic ways, and the others try to, hey, are you going to really go to terrible places? Like, and why? When I first uh, make that move, I actually find my first the calmness actually. The first time that I feel a real calmness, you know, that, that was beautiful. And I still have that. Praise the Lord. Of course, uh, we have a peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of any troubles. Now, um, now contrast, uh, I mean, what, was that a while ago? Like, are we talking years or just recently, by the way? It recently, like I had to okay. deal, uh, I had to like suffer like maybe four or five years to come to that conclusion. 
Of course. I mean, uh, that's normal, by the way, brother. Uh, I mean, you're not alone. It took me 12 years. It took some people that I know 10 and five years. Uh, some took four years. Uh, some took 20. I mean, uh, every person is different. Uh, <laughs> uh, not, uh, not uh, you know, unusual. Um, and uh, Butros Ibn William, I do have Arabic videos. Reach out to me, please. Uh, uh, go ahead and contact me through the website, Sira International. I'll share some of those with you. Uh, so, brother, um, uh, can you contrast uh, the changes that you began to notice about, for instance, did you feel now that uh, your life has a purpose? Um, another thing, could you see now why uh, Nabil Qureshi, uh, while he was attacking in view, in your view, Islam, you felt like he was genuine? I mean, what, what are the other things that allowed you to realize this was the right decision and I am indeed on the right track? So after that, I started to study Bible itself and that I start to actually realize why these guys making stuff that I, they are making. Like, as I say before, like uh, the Paul said uh, he was Jew to Jews because he needed to be there for them to uh, so share uh, the gospel with them. And he was trying to be like the non-believers, non-believers, like the, this Greek people. And these people, and in the end, it say, uh, whatever you do, do it with love. So if you don't, if you do something without love, well, it is meaningless. And when I realize that, and I look at back these people, what they're doing, and I see realize, yeah, yeah, they are actually really loving, and uh, they are actually understanding the spiritual warfare of the, the Bible that trying to d display us. Because uh, I also shocked to, to realize there are Christians that is not aware of that and they only play defensively and waiting for something to happen to them and waiting for people to come to them but last time i checked in the bible jesus actually teach otherwise hey guys go there go teach them and if they judge you don't worry about it because it's a bit gonna tell you tell uh, what you're gonna say so and uh, they also criticize the way of this this approach to how to say non-jesus like but apparently they never actually read the, the Jesus about how he talked about with the Pharisees because of um, they are the people kind of know the way and block the way itself. So they are not saved and they pre <laughs> preventing others to save. So only time Jesus is actually really harsh. That was the people like that. And even Jesus rebuke his disciples when they are lack of, lack of belief, like the when one of them are on the water and try to escape from the you know uh, drowning and Jesus rebuke him because it was lack of faith and he should should better and people uh, this this Christians probably like the lot of Muslims are not actually into religion itself and they are really following and made up Jesus in their mind and that's a real issue because what happened. Uh, when people like uh, then you and David and when you, you guys actually trying to talk with the Muslims, you not just had to deal with Muslims and you just also had to deal with these Christians <laughs> because they think you're doing bad. You are mean to know that that's so that that is like, how can you be more harmful to your like? Remember when the Jesus told the Peter, get behind me, Satan. It wasn't just because he hate him. So these people need to actually like apparently not just muslims need the bible we all need bible <laughs> praise the lord praise the lord so tell me brother um uh like like right now uh do, do you see more and more uh, young generation like yourself who are at least at least exploring some of these things that are being shared on uh, the web especially on youtube are, are they curious about it do you, do you feel like that's the case well, the most Muslims in here, at least, they are usually, even though they are uh, not really devoted, they are somehow are ready to fight, ready to fight against anything if something talk bad about Islam. So it it's is, just a cultural, right? It's an emotional argument. They're culturally trained uh, to, to believe in something and they're not willing to at least explore what's out there. But are you seeing a new trend? Like, are you seeing more and more seekers? Uh, I mean, I... I I know in, in any culture, when, when the authority become more and more religious, it seemed like the people become more and more open-minded. Are you seeing things like this in the region where you at? So I am seeing there some people are actually criticizing Islam itself in here too, but 
not like they try to become more religious toward Jesus or something. They're more like, because the issue is they are only exposed with Islam itself. And because of that, they are actually wounded again, the true God. And their understanding of God is really, really harm, uh, harmed in that way too. They actually can come to even that, come to God to ask, ask something because the Islam itself is not just a religion that just make people uh, stay away from Jesus. Islam is kind of really dangerous for people that can actually hurt their understanding of God. Like it, it is, it is why they even when they uh, have to say leave Islam and try to to be, they basically becoming more atheist than actually because it is hurt their understanding of God. So so bad actually. Yeah. So uh, this is something we're seeing, by the way, uh, in in the Middle East that the young generation first. They come up with their own dream, uh, uh, you know, vision of what Islam should look like. And then they become disenfranchised. They become more disillusioned and they end up claiming that they're atheists. And then some end up seeking Christ. Uh, so I'm not saying each one of them end up following Jesus. That shows the importance of us and the church to share the truth with them all the time because they're seeking something. They just don't know where to turn. Now, did anyone around you? Uh, again, you don't have to be specific, of course, but did anyone around you, whether it's family, it's uh, parents, it's uh, siblings, it's friends, began to notice changes on you after you accepted Christ? Did anyone make a comment to you? Well, uh, interestingly enough, not that much because apparently, <laughs> thanks God, I always somehow following Jesus. Well, I didn't didn't actually solve that much issue with and uh, that much change. Only change that I see from myself now. I don't need to deal with Islam itself, and I don't need to try to make a uh, kind of mind juggling around <laughs> on it. And because that, I'm really, really, really lucky for that. Do you believe you are safe? Uh, right now, or if let's say someone finds out, someone so close to you finds out about a decision, whatever you are living, you know, do you feel at least you're safe? For instance, uh, where I come from, it's going to create some problems for me with the family, at least, and sometimes with the government, depending on what I'm doing. But in your case, wherever you are, you know, the environment you're living in, do you feel mm -hmm. at least safe and secure? Are people going to leave you alone? Are they going to try at least to reason with you, but they're not going to pressure mm -hmm. you? Uh, no, 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 not like that. I'm not coming into, I'm not from a, a nice or what was they called? Uh, good Muslims? No, I'm not <laughs> that kind of safe. I hear you. So brother, uh, what are you doing now? Uh, or at least, uh, what are your hopes for, for ministry at least? I mean, you don't have to talk about your private life, but, but ministry wise, are you engaged in any ministry? Uh, do you have a church you go to? Uh, is it easy for you to find a fellowship, for instance? For church-wise, I, I try to, to, to reach many churches around here, but apparently most of them are kind of deserted and it is kind of hard. And uh, today, actually, I kind of find a place, but it is really far away. But yeah, it is kind of hard for me to, to come with other Christians in physically in that matter, but... I keep, uh, I at least I, I get the message from the Bible that I uh, kind of need to, to share gospel too. And for that, I, I seek the, the, the guidance of God to that he actually bring me to people that I might actually kind of change their life. And that happened a lot. I, even I saw dreams about that and somehow actually got his lead leading for that kind of stuff. So I, I don't feel alone on that. But also, I'm happy to, to share the gospel for the people that are actually happy to, to seek the truth. And I even, there was a few times that I act like a radical Muslim to some Muslims to the, expose the violence of Islam to them. <laughs> that that have not happen. So I am there for anybody that kind of um, try to seek the truth or if I see any, any opening for that case. Wonderful. Uh, I have just to make a quick comment. Uh, we have someone here by the name of Alika saying, Alika, uh, Bruce Six wants to debate the Tawheed with you in Arabic. Well, here is Alika, what you can tell Bruce Six, who obviously doesn't have the gals to contact me directly, to send me a video of his debates in Arabic. <laughs> I want to see what he says about Tawheed. And then me and Sam Shamoon would be more than happy to take him on for a debate. And he can bring... Uh, 
someone else to rescue him during the debate, of course, because he's going to need resuscitation <laughs> when that happens. So, so go ahead, please send me a video. Uh, uh, I need to know who is this Bruce Six. Is he, is he ashamed of his name? He needs to give me his real name, show us his debates. Let me hear him in Arabic. And he can send us to some of his write-up on Tawheed. And we'll be more than happy, me and Sam, definitely. We would love to always devour things like this. So send it our way. There you go. Uh, please share it with uh, Bruce Dix, who is probably hi hiding under a rock right now. Okay, brother. So go ahead. Continue with that. So what is your uh, dream for ministry? What do you aspire to do uh, now or later? Um, like the first stream I actually saw, uh, I was in a place that, with a, a friend of mine that we, I, I, I realized he's my student and we are, uh, we were going to a place to teach about this, this, uh, gospel to a Jews somehow. And I was watching like a movie. <laughs> it was really weird. And after that, I, st I started to, to tell this thing to my friend and he was, that that is one of the points that he understand he need to be with me for this thing because after that he also kind of started to question the the islam itself as a, himself because before that i we was talking about and i realized he become more uh, devoted and he tried to make his daily prayers too and i i i tell him this is your sign to leave islam <laughs> and he think i was joking because what i see from people when they are uh, uh, more, become more critical about their religion. They kind of hug the religion itself to try to uh, try to be more strong and more be more godly and more devoted. But this is actually a sign too. And I saw that sign and tried to to deal with them, and uh, <laughs> and that happened. And other sign, the un other dream actually, I find myself with a with a, a few a different churches, and I wasn't able to to be part of any of them. And in the end. I find myself, uh, I, I was alone with the books itself. And it was my sign to, hey, maybe, you know, the, the, the study the Bible itself before you can actually the deal with other Christians because you need the foundation to, to be safe on, on, uh, on a rock, not a sand. <laughs> that would be really dangerous. Amen, amen. That's uh, Matthew 7. Uh, now, uh, back again to my question, because it's really extremely important for us to be in a fellowship, by the way, brother. Are you in any fellowship online? Uh, uh, with, with others who gather online, for instance. If not, please let me know because I am going to launch an online fellowship in English. I'm doing one in Arabic already. And we would like for you to be fed the word of God. And that doesn't mean I'm the only teacher, but at least it's, it's my heart desire because I see that many, uh, many churches, by the way, in the Middle East and in other parts of that uh, region, they hesitate to allow ex-Muslims to come to their congregation out of fear from retaliation from governments and authorities. And sometimes I feel like I feel sorry for them. I mean, I cannot blame them because they can lose their mm -hmm. license. Uh, so it is extremely important, uh, you know, that you stay in a fellowship, be fed, grow in the word of God. Are you able to do any of this? Well, uh, actually, I'm really happy for that you're going to do that because, yes, I want to be at least an online part of something to be, as Jesus uh, told uh, that in like when you guys uh, come to a place or even in, on online, he probably uh, he basically with us with, with that. And and he basically want us to be together as well and for get more teachings as yes, I, I, I really appreciate of that. Very good. Very good, brother. Uh, so I have, of course, your contact. I'll share ad additional resources with you. I know you're in a great discord. Uh, we have amazing people in there. So I'm hoping that you're being also in contact with some of them. So we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk privately. Not a problem. I just want to bring it up to the attention of everyone here because fellowship is extremely important. That's how we can be strengthened by the word of God. When we feel like we're not alone, when we feel like we're part of the body, when we also feel like there are others that can reach out to just for prayer sometimes, for prayer's sake, mm -hmm. not necessarily for anything else. So that's extremely important. So, so brother, um, uh, what, what would you like to say uh, to, to Muslims who are watching right now or maybe will end up watching later? What, 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 what's in your heart to share with them? Hmm, good question, actually. So... Uh... Guys, uh, if you are actually thinks you are a Muslims and not actually kind of this, even if you don't like these people like the ISIS, they are actually kind of the actual Muslims. And if you guys thinking that you have a good morals, good teachings, check that they actually from coming from Christianity, not from Islam itself. And from what I see for many people thinking this Christian values, they have themselves. 
But no, if first of all, you need to question the religion itself, where it is coming from, what it is claiming of. And for that, you need to, to see what Hadith is saying, what Quran itself is saying, and stop listening to these imams that you, you should already realize they are lying a lot. And you, you should seek your the truth yourself to, to come to foundation and come to, to, is it true in the first place? And after that, you might actually kind of come to maybe a truth because first you need to deal with your ego and for your traditions and for your uh, teachings for that. And if you really seek the truth, it might hurt, yes, but you're going to find it because Jesus told that. And if you seek and you will find, if you ask, you will get. And for that, you need to be more just courage and you need to be the uh, ready to suffer for that if, if necessary. I don't even mean the physical suffering. I, I, I basically mean mentally even so, because you you end up going to be fighting for in, in yourself. And that's going to be harsh. And that, that is hard. And as, as uh, Al-Fadi said, uh, we ha all have to deal with that. Because in the end, uh, in that only thing to matter is the truth. And if you're really into that, it, it is it is really important to actually actually start to question. Amen, amen. So we have uh, uh, Asad, uh, free Yemeni, uh, free Yemeni, saying uh, Alhamdulillah for Islam. Asad, uh, you're not an Asad at all. You're not a lion, uh, uh, by the way, uh, <laughs> because uh, Islam does not teach you to be a lion. I follow the lion of Judah who will devour falsehood basically and destroy all lies. And by the way, uh, Asad, I don't know if you're aware of what's going on right now, but there is a book that you follow that is being shredded to pieces by the grace of God. So I would tell you this, my friend, listen to the truth, come out of these lies, listen to what our brother Ender just says, Open your mind, use your brain that God has given you and follow the way, the truth and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I want to add to what our brother says from the scripture. Here is what our Lord Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew 23. There is eight woes in there, eight curses upon the Pharisees and the religious authorities. And if you're a follower of Islam, you know exactly what I mean by religious authorities who are going to mislead you. And what an amazing thing. Those are some of the passages, by the way, that as I was seeker, open my mind to the reality that Jesus is not kidding about the religious authorities. The first woe, for instance, he says, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Who are the scribes and Pharisees? Those are religious leaders and those who interpret the scripture. Does that sound familiar to you, by the way, Muslims? He's calling them hypocrites because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people for you do not enter in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Did you catch this? Many religious authorities think that they are going to lead you into heaven. Guess what? They can't even enter themselves. By the way, your own prophet of Islam in chapter 46, verse 9 says, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I do not know what will happen to me, nor to you. That's amazing. You're following a blind who doesn't even know where he's going. I mean, speaking of blinds, actually, this is what Jesus says in verse 16, Matthew 23, 16. Woe to you blind guides who say whoever swears by the temple that is nothing but whoever swears by gold of the temple is obligated. In other words, they make up things. They create their own ideas of things. Does that sound familiar to you? If you're a follower of Islam, you have people who are um, like to call religious babblers. Don't have a clue where they're going. They don't know what they're doing. They just want you to follow them. So they have the, the most followers on Twitter most followers on YouTube, on Facebook. You know what? To be to have the most followers on Twitter does not help you. Tweety, see, does not help you at all. Tweet heart is not going to take you anywhere. It's going to take you straight to hell for all of eternity. So don't be fooled by these people because their intent is to glorify themselves. Follow the one that will bring glory to you when you enter into the presence of God one day. Our dear brother, um, uh, what are you planning on doing um, uh, in terms of, um, let's say, uh, your own biblical studies and growth? Are you going to a seminary? Are you planning on studying the Bible at an academic level? Uh, do you have a ministry in mind that you hope to launch one day? Do you have any gifting that you feel that the Lord is giving you right now? 
Well, uh, the first that I want to, to strengthen my the faith and my knowledge uh, with the Bible itself. And already uh, I can kind of really happy when I kind of remember stuff from it because it is really, really lovely. And for that, I, I want, yes, I want to be more uh, to, to more uh, strong with the Bible itself and more with the religion itself because I, I feel like it and I, I, I am loving every part of it, especially because after <laughs> after you had to deal with the Quran itself, this book is, now this is the book <laughs> because this is amazing. And uh, because of the Muslims, uh, they, they never ever actually read, had to deal to read the, the Quran itself. They can't even understand what I feel about that because they they wasn't there to suffer the Quran itself. They wasn't there to 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 move move along the holes in it and try to make sense because it jump all over the place and it make no sense and it talks like a, a madman. And when I start to 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 read this one now, what what I want is actually first I want to the finish it again again maybe probably read again and like again. I want to basically read this all over again like uh, constantly because this is this is the food that i need and after that yes i want to if 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 my if god will one of the things that i want to do actually is maybe try to move a different country so i can actually start to share my gospel without actually uh die it you know a dead person cannot share anything it, it's hard uh, I, I i think that before but <laughs> apparently people warned me before that so they don't want me to that so yeah if they want want to and for that yes uh, the, my my first goal is uh, first able to go a place like maybe i want to see for example how to touch i i really like her the tree is really amazing that just that alone i could just move to united kingdom just for her <laughs> which is amazing and maybe i can the united states looks like really good place as well but yeah the first so i can actually kind of to 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 do what i want to do and yes i want to, to study more on that was go i was uh thank you for sharing that uh, someone here i'm gonna put their comment which is uh, absolutely true ender read it and the holy spirit will reveal it to you and that's absolutely a powerful statement and a biblical statement and that's what i was going to go to the scripture uh to uh, quote something for you but it's okay you can go to first corinthians chapter 2 and read the entire chapter first corinthians chapter 2 and you'll see that that particular chapter focuses on the power of the holy spirit to help us learn grow understand the scripture we don't need imams to go to so my brother my, my encouragement to you is while you are maybe hoping to attend this class or that seminar or that seminary or that Bible college, you continue to read the word of God daily. You'll be amazed how the word of God, the Holy Spirit will enable you and enrich you and help you grow. And of course, reach out to brothers and sisters in the Lord to ask questions. There are many amazing uh, resources online, of course, these days. But all that to say is don't let the enemy of the gospel trick you to tell you, you know what, unless you do this, you can learn the word of God. Unless you be with this person, you cannot, no, no, no. You have the Holy Spirit, the author of the scripture with you, in you forever. And he will guide every step that you will be taken. So with that says a brother, um, I know some people are asking me a lot of questions about your particular location. And to those of you who are asking those kind of questions, I've already promised our brother, I'm not going to get into any political questions for his safety and for the sake of keeping it out of politics. So if you feel like uh, that I've been ignoring your questions, I'm not ignoring him. I've seen many of your questions, guys, but you're asking specific questions that I'm not willing to really engage in, especially for the sake of our own brothers with that says before we conclude our live stream any questions any questions that you guys have for our brother and moderators i appreciate it if you can pinpoint something that i may have missed uh so uh brother um i, I don't really know uh obviously um you know the environment where you're in and uh where you're at but but my encouragement to you is to um uh, rest assured that the Lord of glory knows who you are, knows you by name. He will be with you. He will uh, strengthen you and support you. And uh, be wise, of course. Uh, you don't have to make decisions that are unwise. You do not need to bring uh, 
any harm to yourself or even to those who are around you. Sometimes, you know, those who are around you could suffer on account of our unwise decisions. But all that to say is that continue to pray, continue to find good fellowship to connect to it with even online, if that's possible. Study the word of God daily. Like I said, I'm going to do my best to share with you what I know available online and hopefully others in Discord and in uh, your own uh, network will be able to help you with that as well. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see if we have any specific questions. Okay, so I think I have a question from Roger. Roger is saying, what is the best way to evangelize Muslims? Uh, Ender, from your own experience, uh, did anyone evangelize to you? Or what would you say uh, the best way to evangelize Muslims uh, from your own experience? Put it this way. Um, in that case, you need to first uh, need to know who you're dealing with, because there are different kind of Muslims uh, that, that require a different kind of uh, approach to them. There are some uh, some people that you can be really kind and really uh, the loving, displaying your loving to them. And because they are they are the people that are not really fault into trap of this, this religion, but they only know it from their family and stuff like that. They kind of actually seeking truth without uh any try to harm you in a other way because first you need to to to, to realize uh, is this is this muslim asking question or is he is he attacking with the height of any question uh when you when you realize that you can uh, you, you shouldn't be that harsh to somebody that actively seeking truth without any actually attacking you and are really sincere about it but other than that when when you're dealing with other people that that basically that with their sins and that with their egos first you you try to make them become how to say aware of their their uh, their misinformation so they the issue is you don't need to beat somebody in the in the conversation itself. You need to see, uh, you need to put seeds so they can actually go go to back to their deans and uh, ins or whatever they they live in. So they can actually start to drill, start to, to question what what you talk about and what that ha when that happened. You don't you don't just want to destroy their religion. It is bad idea as well because in uh, I forget the book itself. I'm sorry. Uh, it's basically say when you uh, ex uh, expose a a, uh, a devil and a demon that you can if you don't put a protection in the, that place that the, the more demon will can come back. You do, you don't just want to po uh, polemics on that one. You kind of need. Both polemics and apologetics, because you need to bring a solution for your uh, the, the problem. And if you just say, "Hey, you you believing a false god," and then it's like, no, it is not going to be, be be there. But uh, other option, if you just try to be just apologetics and just try to defend your religion without actually the the the, the break the 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 lies of this li lie walls itself. You cannot reach the person without actually dealing with the lies and with the with the basically snakes it have. So you need first clean the garden and then the plant the seed. And some people also because they are uh, kind of I don't know why, but they are not actually realize that. But their approach only work those with have a clean garden. Yes, their approach can work some people as well, but that because they already have clean. And you need to be harsh against. Uh, people that have really really terrible garden and for that you need to be dynamic you need to be uh, aware of your situation basically so you need to be loving with your action and you need to be really really um, sincere on that and really clever about that hey amen we have a couple of questions here one from Terence, uh, and, and you can share with me if you like uh, your thoughts uh, Terence Cole is asking how do you teach your friends about Jesus when they do not believe in him as the savior. Uh, I mean, I'm going to give my thought and, and brother, if you want to add to that, that's up to you. Uh, I mean, it, obviously I, I doubt uh, that I'm, I'm going to speak about Muslims right now. I doubt you're going to meet a Muslim uh, who believes Jesus is a savior uh, or even will be willing to accept that Jesus is a savior. So there is wisdom in trying to find where are they in their thought about salvation, assurance of salvation, sin and salvation and say, take it from there and begin to explore with them so who's going to save you from your sin how uh, how sure are you of entering into heaven and then try to draw their attention to the powerful descriptions of christ in the quran because it was stolen plagiarized 
taken out of the Bible. Like, for instance, Jesus is called the Word of God. Wow, that's amazing. Do you know that Jesus was called the Word of God in the Gospel of John? That's the very Gospel that Muslims attack all the time. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, and he's called the Messiah, the chosen one of God. Do you know that the whole Bible talks about this Messiah and Jesus himself declared that the Messiah is divine and so on and so forth. So, so you're going to have to really deal with it one person at a time. There is no step-by-step -step process. Anything you want to add to this particular answer, brother? Yes. Um, for you see that they, so, so if are they really, really sincere with the, the belief in their own religion? So if they are, they should already, I already see this Jesus guy is Kalimatullah and the, and the Ruhullah. So you already should realize, hey, this guy should be really important. <laughs> and for that, and if you already believing in, in, in a God, that kind of, as you say, stolen from these sources, Maybe you should check this this sources itself, so you can actually the, the go there to teach for yourself and learn for yourself as well. Amen. We have another brother li like us, um, uh, Heavy Tears, um, uh, brother. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, Heavy Tears is saying, "How do we approach ex-Muslims who are so uh, sick of religion?" Uh, that they become atheists. Uh, there's a big community of them. And I would agree with every tears. There's a lot of young Muslims, by the way, who are leaving Islam. They're not coming to Christ, of course, but they don't know where to go. They claim to be atheists, which, by the way, incidentally, me and David Wood did an entire series on how can you be an ex-Muslim and an atheist at the same time? It doesn't work that way. So with that says, brother, um, you know, I, I, I see the social media platforms are one of those excellent ways to try to reach out to them, find their communities, uh, reason with them. For instance, many of my uh, live streams sometimes end up being on pages uh, for ex-Muslims. Now, I don't know how they react to that. They've never really attacked me, but uh, sometimes we have to really continue to share on those particular pages. So uh, what is your experience with that, with that kind of community? Uh, it is the hardest people that are actually giving me trouble because, as you say, and this is actually why I see the Islam is really, really dangerous. It not just hurt you, it just just keep you wounded for a long time. And I, I also really have trouble with this, this topic and I, I want to, I need to learn more about this thing because it is really hard to share them. It is like a a hurt animal you know it is really hard to even try to be helpful to them because they they think you are also dangerous so i i have really i i am really struggling with that too so i need that answer as well please yeah amen i mean it's it's not easy of course when someone and here's what i tell people um when people tell you we're ex-muslims and atheists Please remember, they left a religion called Islam. Don't talk to them about Christianity as if Christianity is a religion they need to embrace. They're tired of religion. So it's the relational aspect of Christianity that they need to be aware of, relation with God. So you have to really be wise how to approach them. Now, I'm not saying the Bible doesn't talk about religion. All I'm saying is they need to understand in Christ, there is a relationship that they lacked when they were followers, in this case, of Islam. I would agree with them that they're tired of the religion itself. They're tired of religious authorities. They're tired of lies. They're tired of lack of hope and so on and so forth. So we have to really find the right approach, which is a rest, uh, restoration of relationship. And every person is going to be different, but we need to be bold. We need to engage them in a dialogue and a discussions. We need to have answers for their doubts. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, not a whole lot in the Christian community sometimes is equipped to do things like this, uh, which saddens me. Uh, to say the least. Um, uh, let's say, uh, I'm going to take a look here and see if there is any other questions. Um, uh, yeah, Ender knows Sam, by the way. He's, he's familiar with Sam. Uh, some of them are making comments that you need to be familiar with Sam Shimon. Oh, I love Sam. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me see, brother, if there is any uh, additional uh, questions. Many, many excellent questions in here. And uh, we need to... Um, you know, just see if there is anything else. I don't want to miss something important. At any rate, guys, uh, I don't see really any uh, any particular questions. Wait a minute. Maybe there's one. How do you feel now that the truth have set you free, Ender? That's a question for you. Well, I, I feel really, really better because now I don't need to try to argue with myself about a justification of this, this really weird God. But 
uh, now I can actually stand behind the book, the God that I actually believe in. So it is more easy to live like that compared to constantly trying to to mind juggle and mind uh, the the walking all this. It is yeah, it is actually easy to live like that. A lot easy actually. Wonderful. Uh, um, someone by the name of uh, Christian X Muslim saying he wants to encourage you that you're not alone, that there is a large community uh, uh, like you. Uh, by the way, Christian X Muslim, if you can reach out to us and give us a link to some of these communities that you're talking about, it'll be good for all of us to know about this, brother. Um, here is a good question. Uh, Stickman Sam is saying, is it a good strategy to witness to Shia Muslims using the sacrifice of Imam Hussein to the sacrifice of Jesus. I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to talk from a Saudi standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you have 10 Saudis, and as you know, in Saudi, there's about 85% uh, who are considered to be Sunni. Uh, majority of them are really devout. That's the, what we call Salafi or Wahhabi. 15% of the population are considered to be Shia. If you have 10 Saudis, right? You have 10 Saudis you're witnessing to. Uh, you'll notice that at least, this is my experience, between six and seven of them who embrace Christ come from a, Shia background, because there is a lot of common grounds in there that could resonate with them, which is the blood sacrifice, uh, the uh, praying for someone to intercede on their behalf, and, and so on and so forth. So I would say, yes, there is some hope in drawing attention to things like this. Uh, do you deal, by the way, uh, I don't know what your background was. Do you consider yourself to be a, a, a Sunni background? Uh, is there any Shia background where you grew up? Well, the first that I think I was a Sunni, but after I realized what is the Sunni and Shia mean, I kind of find myself a little bit Shia on this, not religiously though. It is more like the, what it called? Um, other word that, uh, that politically, because I agree with the, the Ali side on the stuff that they shouldn't fight for to, uh, you know, the, the, to pick the caliphate first. Maybe, you know, guys, maybe bury your prophet first. <laughs> for that and also other than that apparently i talk with a lot of shia and they actually kind of know the corruption of the the the, the quran itself but better than most sunni people because the sunni people trying to hide a lot of the sunni sources itself somehow but at least these people are kind of know so this there is an osman that tried to burn the qurans and the basically kind of ruined islam for them they they I, I have to say, most of them actually believing in a, in a Islam that basically say Sunni people make him more uh, demonic. So they are actually kind of more uh, Christian-like in that case for at least the people that I know. And yeah, so there's a, at least there more, there's a sense for them. Yes, I agree with that. Well, that's great. Um, I'm looking one last time, brother, here to see if there is any additional questions. And and Christian X Muslim, thank you. Your point is taken. I was also referring just in case you're aware of any online communities, uh, remember to reach out to us as well. Um, I think there is a question here. Um, let me read it first before I, uh, I decide. Um, mm hmm hmm Yeah, I'm going to skip that one. It's okay. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, well, I hope that uh, you would agree um, uh, to, to be with us um, and uh, come back again, maybe uh, whenever you feel like you're ready to, to share. And uh, with that also in mind, I want to uh, address one comment that is made here before we close. Um, uh, Brother Butros Ibn William is saying, do you have advice for Western missionaries in the Arab world? Yes, my advice is please know the culture, know it very well. Don't speak on behalf of us. Uh, you're not our spokesperson. Uh, we can speak for ourselves, by the way. Listen to us as ex-Muslims uh, from that region. Uh, give us a voice. Don't marginalize us just because you think like you're the expert here. That's really what I want to say to them. Uh, I apologize. It's been my experience uh, so far. And don't bring methodologies and don't say, you know, inside a movement and don't say take step one, step two, step three. None of this works, by the way. So uh, understanding the culture is extremely important. And do not bring Islam as if it's your stepping stone into Christianity. Don't use the Quran as your stepping stone into Christianity. It doesn't work. Uh, I speak from experience also. So Hopefully that will be a good thing uh, and a, a good way for them to assess what I'm saying. Now, I'm not really attacking or insulting anyone. I'm just sharing the truth with you. Uh, this has been my experience in the 
Arab world that many Western uh, missionaries somehow uh, come up with their own methodologies and ideas. And uh, no wonder many of them have failed to bring a lot of people to Christ because they just use Western methodologies. Uh, trust the Lord, trust the Holy Spirit. He will guide every step that you take. Listen to us. We have a voice and uh, we uh, do uh, you know, contribute to our Muslim uh, families and friends one way or another. Maybe you don't like how we do it. It's up to you. Uh, we're not here really to seek your advice uh, and to seek your uh, acceptance. We're here to just uh, partner with you if you're willing to do so. I think it's a mouthful, I know, but uh, I speak from experience. That's why I'm, I'm sharing a lot of my thoughts here. Brother, thank you so much again. I hope that uh, you will consider joining us. Uh, thank you for blessing everyone here with your uh, testimony. Uh, I pray that the Lord will use it in a mighty way to bring more and more and more people uh, to um, to know him as the only true savior. With that in um, mind, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, brother. You have a thought. Last and, thought? Uh, and for lastly, yes, I mean, uh, I hope this this will help for more people, and I hope they will come to come to come for their senses, and I hope they 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 should really really uh, they watch people like you because they not call you redeemer for nothing, uh, the master of divine for that matter. So so from what I see, you really know what you're doing, and people really really be careful about what they saying to you because apparently they think you are you you are just a job, but no. <laughs> they should be really careful about that. So, and they should be really come to come to you for that too. By the way, Amen. Um, I want to close. Uh, uh, Prophet Google, you're asking an excellent question about approaching Muslim women. Guess what? Next week, I'm going to have a panel with two amazing ex-Muslim women followers of Jesus. I'll keep it under wrap for now until I finalize details, but please join us then and you can ask these kind of questions. Thank you, brother. Thank you everyone for being here with us. We appreciate you. May the Lord bless you all. And until we meet again next week, which I'll have a number of live streams next week lined up, uh, brother Alex uh, Blagajevich will be back. Sam Shamoan will be back. And we do have this amazing panel as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you, brother. And uh, this is Al-Fadi over and out.